Mm-hmm. There you go, right? Very. <laughs> Hello, wonderful people. Welcome. We are around the world. I'm currently in Portugal. Plupsi, where are you? I'm in Moabit in Germany by the river <laughs> Spree. Oh, nice. And I am in Valparaiso, Chile. Yes, you see, like very elastic, <laughs> very elastic thing. So oh, a, boat, a boat is coming. Look. Oh, so nice <laughs> to be there with that weather. Yes, I just have like a wide wall, like nothing interesting is happening in the background. <laughs> we can we can edit it later. We can add some <laughs> cyberspace. That's true. <laughs> or you can just leave it like white and plain. <laughs> 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 so we are here today to just chat and talk about many interesting things in my personal opinion, that we're working on. So today we have Flupsi. Do you maybe want to introduce yourself or we just introduce ourselves and people get to know us better? Yeah. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Flupsi. Um, I uh, started this shell project sometime early this year. And uh, now we are heading into the Shell Congress um yeah what else is interesting about me i mean i'm okay so um i'm i'm kind of an artist but i'm i don't like to produce things or so i i prefer to produce processes and spaces and invite people and um i'm like currently i'm interested in um in the imagination and deviant bodies, which means like uh, bo- there, there's kind of, there is a norm, but this norm of course is, is not fixed. It's something that, that is shared among each other through the imagination. And how, how can we um, put, put our activism directly into this imagination um, where this norm is produced and how can we disturb this norm and, and um, upheave it? So I find I find this interesting about especially about like for me for example it's about um, mostly personally it's about neurodiversity which is kind of a new term and I'm ambivalent about it because it implies that there's also a neurotypical um, body or mind or behavior and so my my personal question I think is how can can I, with my specific neuro non typical or neurotypical um, <laughs> aspects, um, um, be with each other, with other beings, and and um, and make the world a bit more welcoming for for people who who are not not normal? <laughs> <laughs> I think not normal is normal. But we can dig into that later. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I introduce myself really quick. I'm Jack Nell. I currently based in, in Berlin. I do many things. Uh, one of them is uh, I'm a creative producer. I write, make poetry, work with bodies through yoga and meditation and the breath. And um, I'm a very curious person. And I ended up in this project because uh, Flipsy and I have been crossing our path in different spaces until we just got here. So you are, you are okay? Yes, You're done? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Valky. Uh, Valty also, it's okay. Uh, I am now based in Valparaíso, but I am super nomad person, so I am always going there and there, and I like that. <laughs> uh, I am. Um, I have been working a lot with uh, handicapped people. I don't like the word handicap actually, uh, and I have been working as a dancer, as a assistant, and. And I also have a sister that that she cannot walk, and 
so I made a book about this and now I am selling it in Chile <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for me my childhood and everything was with not normative body I mean I was the more normal body in my surround I don't know how to say it but yeah yeah and yeah, so I also think that I am a neurodivergent people, person, and um, yeah, so I never uh, could adapt to the university or I don't know, I am a kind of weird, inadaptable human. <laughs> <laughs> now that now that we jump into that, I'm just like jump in the entire structure because that's fun, and then <laughs> it's very interesting because I I kind of relate with all the things that you're saying, and but during your process, did you ever feel like that you were very comfortable creating your space and the people around you, and then somehow like that evolved your your own universe yeah so yeah sure. that was my my case for example yeah 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 i think with my friends and with the people that i have been meeting in in my path i create a lot of universe that i feel really comfortable and, and really yeah but not nothing to do with institutions or i don't know it's always more personal stuff like I, I think this project is also very, I don't know, very sensitive. So I'm super happy to be part of because I, I don't feel this formality. Forma, formality is okay to say. It. Yeah, I, and, and these super structures that you have to be something and re, be really professional and really, I don't know. So and I'm somehow. Super happy to be here. <laughs> and somehow when you're saying that um, then you express in the way you're not feeling um, all this uh, professionalism that I would translate with pressure in my case and yeah. this is the most professional place I've ever been people are on time people are in the meeting things are done like very quick and efficiently and <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're gonna have the experience with the rest of the team, Flipsy, but that's what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're in a, we're in a, we are in a different space. That's great. Um, so maybe we just um because we've been just talking about the project and the project that we just jump into it, but that we're not talking about the project. So now maybe we just take the time to just try to describe why we are working and why we're we doing this. You wanna jump into that, Flexi? Um, me? Sí. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so for, for the background, um, I think I've been dreaming of, of um, creating a process that allows several people, like more than two, maybe, or more than three, um, to be independent of, of this. I have to work in order to earn money, in order to earn a flat, in order to buy food and stuff uh, for some time. And instead to, to focus all energies without worries into, into the work that we really want to do, that we want to give to the world. Um, like the, this world of this uh, this work of um, activism basically um, and um, so I got a scholarship uh, last October and then in winter I also worked as a programmer um, and I was kicked out because I was very unproductive um, but but uh, for three and a half months I've been earning um, about four thousand euros per month was it or three three thousand something? Um, we, and then I had more money than ever in my life suddenly, um, and this allows me not to work um, this year and also to um, 
to get out of this kind of scarcity mindset where you have to think about, okay, can I afford to be generous in this moment? Can I afford to listen to this person or do I need to shut down and focus on, on the very urgent need to produce something um, or to find a new job or something? Um, yeah, but, but I wanted to share this, uh, this, this uh, sudden feeling of abundance. Um, and I also finally wanted to, to, um, yeah, to do what I've, I wanted to do for so long, which is to, to open this up, to, like to make a, an invitation to the board, to, to people who uh, may, may not be able to pay for residency or to, um, who maybe also don't have this, um, for example, academic background in order to engage in in uh, in funded opportunities that, that require some sort of specific language, right? Um, and instructors too. Instructors. Again, very set of structures and language. Yes. There's so much that 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 comes with privilege. Like, uh, I, I I cannot um, I, I I don't even know all the things, but but it's like there are so many invisible ways of exclusion. I mean, when I was working, for example, in winter, um, everyone was talking about inclusion. And then they were hiring like the 10th person who had been studying in London. <laughs> like they, they were so like, they were, they were very, very kind and very well-meaning, these people in the, in, in the company that I was working. Um, and they really tried their best, but, but the, it's very structural, the, this exclusion mechanism mechanisms and and i'm sure that we we right now are reproducing so many exclusionary mechanisms still but it's a learning process and and uh and we will not stop learning and improving and opening up and and uh decentering our own perspective it's really interesting that you mentioned inclusion um as an example in a workplace. And I think just with that example and that concept of inclusion, there are like so many layers. And I think we can just jump into like the different language that we manage. And mm -hmm. of course, something is some is something saying inclusion and something else uh, living inclusion and like feeling inclusion. And many, many, many different layers. So I think um, language and grammar plays a lot in this game, just so, mm. sort of same, uh, in the way we structure things, in the way we name things. And, and it's very interesting because the last month I've been working a lot with the body and discovering and things that I don't I, I don't have the complete tool in order to search and listen more than more than search is listen through the body. So um, now that we are in living in the 21st century, a technological place for some of us, that we can create many spaces through language, through images through even like places that exist that they don't exist. And it's quite an amazing time for, for creation, I would say. Mm. Um, how you and us in the Shell Congress, we will touch that particular point in the grammar and the language combined with the structure, if that <laughs> question makes any sense. That's a perfect answer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK. That's like really a perfect answer. <laughs> yes, we just continue. So like you, 
you were talking about grammar and I so I feel like um, but but this is really just a, a very open feeling that I have um, is that um, especially when when we think about feminist theory that has influenced my thinking a lot um, recently I've been reading a lot of cyber feminism um, and the and and it's it's in, inspired by um, theories that, that were developed in the in the 80s and 70s, and they in turn derive from from um, a lot from psychoanalytic theory, and it's so language based. Like it's it's very it's about grammars and and about how how our perception of reality is is like is um, connected like the dots are connected by grammatical structures in in this theory um so so for example what is gender for like in a lot of theories gender is um a construct that is that is accredited grammatically um like where 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 we have we learn kind of rules like like grammatical rules and we talk about it and and then it's very language centric and i feel that um but I'm not sure about this, but I feel that um, like the body or the imagination, like the process of creating images inside of you, um, which are still shared, which are not private, um, that these and dancing is goes or music, they in, in some way they go beyond language. I'm not sure about this because Maybe they don't. Maybe I, I just don't have the language. Um, but I, I find it interesting to explore. And and the other thing is like when you talk about inclusion as a word, um, as a buzzword, uh, it's very exclusionary. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean it's it's part of a vocabulary that is being used by a very a very colonial institutions in order to how do you say like whitewash greenwash pinkwash themselves like um I, I i like the word decentering for example because it it means that um for example when you say inclusion then you center yourself right you like you say i am here and then the other is somehow being excluded by making a larger umbrella or something like this um, but when you say I decenter myself, you like then then this, the stage is no longer where I am, like in, in Europe or in, in Germany, in a super colonial country. Um, but it it's a it's a moving stage. It goes through all of us, and and yeah, I, I mean, okay, so. so yeah, we we are to, we are right now talking. We're using language, but we are also using body language, and body know, language is, and is not is, just language. <laughs> and this is and this is why I'm very curious about um, Blackie, because you you have a very different relationship with um, with with activism, with tactics, uh, in relationship with bodies. Because before when we started before we started recording, you were saying something very interesting. So I would really like to um, know what's your experience through body language. Because I think you uh, might have a very different uh, perspective of that. Oh, no, yes, yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> I was confused. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I mean, for me, I am super against talking. I mean, I like to talk, but I think it's more than enough. We speak so much. We shouldn't speak so much. <laughs> and we should, I don't know, to try more to do things with our bodies. I am speaking about all the bodies, you know. And for example, I was working with Roland, that is a German guy. And we never speak in we never speak because he was he is a german speaker and i'm a spanish speaker and we never could talk really but we really could understand each other and could work good and yeah i i feel that a lot of people was like wow 
how you will assist a guy that you cannot speak with and I don't know I think there is much more possibilities when you are really observing the body language you know and also now, now I don't know how it's in Germany or in Europe but in Chile at least it's super uh, the moda like the trendy. Super, in trending, yeah, mm -hmm. to go to the psychologist and all these things about therapy and everyone is speaking about therapy and you should go to therapy and posting things like that. <laughs> and I just don't feel like that. I, I feel like we should go to the sea, to the ocean to swim and we should go to dance and we should to to, to speak with animals and hug trees and uh, put our feet on the ground, you know, I, I feel like we have a lot of different languages that we should open. And also because we speak in a, a colonial language, I speak Spanish, you know, it's like I am speaking the, I don't know, sh shit, you know, <laughs> even if it's beautiful, I, I am speaking something that is, is cutting all my feelings in somehow. Yeah. Uh, for so, me, it's a, uh, like a scissor of my experience, the language. This is very wonderful what you said. Then dramatic as I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a sister of my experience. I will copy yeah, that. Yeah, but it's true. <laughs> like, like, I feel like that for some people is, yeah. Um, so from all the things that we've been talking here, I think um, this is kind of like the space that we like to share with people where and please correct me if I'm wrong, where we can um, use our imagination through different sources of communication and non-communication, because sometimes non-communication is also very necessary. And, um, and, and connect beyond a structure, I would say. So, we we are planning to have um, the first uh, Shell Congress in Berlin, and then afterwards we went to have a Shell Cubator, which, <laughs> which are um, wonderful names. <laughs> so, um, Flipsy, would you like to tell us more about the um, the relationship between the Congress and the creator and then how that it might develop. Yeah. And so the, the Congress will be quite dense and about uh, sharing what we bring. So all of us in our journey um, have like de developed relations with, with body language with with dance music um writing collage drawing photography videography um philosophy and so on like you know the, the disciplines and we bring this into the con congress and um and we um we will meet people from very different disciplines and uh, this is a challenge because we like when when I talk about the shell, I use a specific language that I have learned from books and talks and peer groups that that I have been engaging with. And these are different terms and different um, approaches than other people. Um, but on the other hand, I also feel like there is um, there is always a lot of um, connection surface like even if if people come from very different journeys um i hope that this um this figure of the shell it like um i feel like it can figure as a connective figure between disciplines or as as like a you know, discipline come from here, from there, from there, from there. And this the shell is like, it's a surface with creases, which grows and shrinks, which is woven, which which hides and reveals. 
um, so so it can it can hold um, it can hold a lot of what we approach through very different disciplines and then the challenge will be of course to not impose a discipline not to impose one discipline but to really um, bring in like this energy of this energy of discipline right like this um, okay now we are doing this and and follow me da, 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 and do to do, do and here's this and here's that and so on and then and then I think this is how we can connect like through this this direct energy and um, I hope it's also possible to to um, to have this internationally so it's an international shell congress um, which means we have a live stream <laughs> kind of banal but yeah that's but also cool I mean it's it's cool yeah as you said Chagnell like the 21st century is very rich in in possibilities like we can we can have a very physical and at the same time very international congress um but also the in the sense of meeting um um i i wish to understand this word congress in a very imaginative manner like uh <laughs> like congress um in our imagination is this very gray very structured very square thing where people sit on chairs they were perhaps kind of uncomfortable clothes right and and they there is a dress code and a lot of people are in, excluded and people use these words and there are a lot of ways to be impolite and and to be awkward <laughs> like a lot of traps um to to just uh fail and and i think it's it's wonderful to to misdefine this word and to say, yeah, we are making a Congress where we are gonna dance, where we are gonna have these frictions, where we really um, go to where the boundaries are. We are not like in a very safe space and like we, it, it's a safe space in a different way, right? So we are not in the space where everything is defined and we know what is allowed to say, what is not allowed to say, but we'll are, we are, we be in this space where um, we, we come with this um, intention to be challenged and to challenge each other and to know where's your boundary where's your boundary where's my boundary this is something we all want to learn and this congress i think is a beautiful opportunity for for all of us to to um touch boundaries and not to cross boundaries but to touch and be thankful for learning about our boundaries um this is just two days i mean it's i, I guess it's it's enough to kind of give each other um, an intense um, opening into the practice that, that we do in our lives and that we, we dream of. Um, but it's, it's not going to be enough to start to really create these um, sustainable processes that we need in order to really make a dent into the imaginary, to really turn it around, which we want to do. So. So the Congress is all about just seeding something, just creating a connection between certain practices, people, groups, languages, non-languages. Um, and then the Shell Cubator is this opportunity to, uh, to have the, these processes that take more time, the need to percolate and to rot, to be digested. I mean, after the Congress, we will probably all fall into a hole. Um, we will need some aftercare and then we will slowly reconnect. Maybe we will remember a word or, a, or a, an image or a, a touch where we were touched and then we, we can get in touch again and, and we can um, re-refer to some of the seeds that we put there. And, and that that were that emerged in, in our friction among each other. And then we can put these seeds into this collective shell cubator and grow shells out of it and put it on the shells. So like shell space. <laughs> A shell space. Shell space. Shellscape. Shell 
Just Just explosion. Yeah. Just explosion. <laughs> Oh, it's very interesting what you say about disciplines because I don't think one person could just do one thing. I think we are creative beings that we relate with different things. That's why we enjoy music, we enjoy dancing. Some people are more connected with words, some people are more connected with silence. So, um, yes, yeah, so some part of the structure currently when societies just make us believe they just do one thing. And, and I think this is a very wonderful time that actually more than logically expanding, people are feeling it, what, it, what is meaning, what is the meaning in the word expansion? Like, that's why so many people um, are feeling very uh, restricted with uh, their jobs because they're doing this for a very long time, or that's why many creative and artists they are not very in sync with just defining themselves as in one thing because yeah. like i think the, the beauty of art is this you can explore and be creative yeah none of us has actually said i am a musician i, I am. just say like <laughs> 500 things <laughs> and then to be continued <laughs> yeah. yes so is there anything else that you would like to Add in this wonderful conversation that we can keep for like three hours with really non intense topics. Uh, structures. <laughs> I'm I'm interested in two things because um, I I somehow know your practices, and you also mentioned in the very beginning, like when we talked about what we want to talk about, um, you mentioned deviant bodies, and so I'm curious about how you experience deviation. And, and uh, I think you're like, I know that you're making these, these zines. Um, so, so how does it connect deviation and, and zine making? Oh, wow. Um, I think it's like the scene are like an, uh, an exploration and uh, uh, about fu future and I think I, I feel that I am transforming uh, the past to make a, a, another future, just changing the grammatic of images uh, and like to putting on, on evidence. Like, I don't know, like I, for, for me, it's super evident uh, some images and then I put one with another one and and I make this connection and, and then the people say, oh, wow, I never thought about this and, that, and this together. <laughs> And yeah, when I was in Europe, I was enjoying a lot the images because they were super colonial and, yeah. and, <laughs> and it was super amazing to, I, I don't know the word in English, I will say in Spanish, like uh, desen, desenredar. Untangle, yes, it's like you untangle. untangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, untangle the images and yeah. And I don't know, <laughs> I never... <directly. laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I feel like it's, it's super uh, analog also, and I think this is something that I never meet someone that makes something like that. <laughs> yeah, like, and... like, so I remember you, you were, of course, when you were in Germany, you were using these uh, very old German books that, that structure the world, like they, and, and when I was looking at your zines, the whole German history that is like so heavy in me, like most of it I am not even conscious of, like I'm full of this fucking German history. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I lost the conversation. Yes, because it's just the disconnect. Just, oh, okay. Let's wait for a minute. Okay. Look the way Flipsy froze. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it looked like so deep into it. Yeah, I was super. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Hello, we're back. Program. We lost someone in other space, but we <laughs> 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 like we were just saying that the we lost you in the most interesting part of your 
of your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you were describing um, a bulky a fan scene. So if you can just start all over again, or like a summit of what you were saying about um, the fan scene. Do you remember Flopsy? And you were saying, I, sorry, like my. My, my internet uh, was again a bit weird. Uh, can you repeat your question? Yes, then we were talking, you were saying your opinion about Balki's scene. Mm, so, yeah. and, then, and then you disappear to another space. So if you wanna submit that, that opinion to us again, so we can just like jump into that. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm reading about this. Uh, Oh shit, the internet is again unstable. Wait. Maybe. That's a really high ceiling you have there. <laughs> yeah, it's an attic. Um, the, the the internet was again unstable, but like um, I hope now it works. Yeah. Um so um I I find it interesting how uh, these zines open a space in the imagination where, for example, the German history could be totally different. And I wonder how this relates to um, bodies and deviation. That's for you, Bank. Yeah. I feel like the imaginary that we have now is super uh, conditioned by the publicity and and like the television and movies and Hollywood, actually. And the dramatic of the images is super um, fierce world uh, uh, forces projections. Mm. And yeah, I think if we play more with, and we put more attention on how the images uh, condition us, uh, mm. we can really destroy a lot of constructions in our mind. Yeah. Yeah, and so if we could de uh, destroy some construction, we ca we are actually a deviant body. <laughs> if, <laughs> if we have another understanding of of images. I was just thinking, oh, that's so simple to say, but actually, and so hard to do, but actually I think that it's not so hard. It is quite, we, th we, we believe there is really hard, but at the okay. end, I think, yes, I think mm. it's, it's quite easy. It's quite easy, but just like our mind like to, like to complicate everything for us that we think that is like a sneaky way or that is just like I just said it's a really different um, um, difficult thing to untangle but it's actually quite simple. <laughs> yeah, it's super simple. Uh, it I, I, also like... play a, mm -hmm. I also play a lot with the words like to make games of with words and yeah. just to say something with not so much sense, but at the end, it has a lot of sense. Yes. For me. It's like the it's like the white sound in the radio. Sometimes I feel <laughs> my brain is the white sound in the radio, and then actually the answer is just silent. You know, it's like <laughs> as simple as that. Like. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, and for taking the time to be here in these yes. different time zones. We are in the time zones where we managed to be in the same place digitally. How amazing that is. Meow. <laughs> yes. Meow. Thank you, meow. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could say uh, something about, um, like, because now, uh, what day is today, actually? Uh, um, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, so people can apply till Monday to be a uh, part of the um, Congress. Yes. And we have an open call online. Uh, you can answer questions and you can answer them 
with anything that a computer accepts, which means with video or with audio or with uh, dots, dots, I don't know, uh, with anything that can be digitized. Um, so um, don't forget to apply till the 12th of July. And then we will see um, how we can put together an interesting combination of, of participants. And um, in any case, you can also join the live stream uh, from everywhere in the world um, and the conversation. Um, and some of the um, contributions on the Congress will be um, connected with the world. So uh, you can be part of that. Um, and we will, on the um, Thursday, 29th of July, we will have a dialogue which you can join. Um, yeah, and the process will be much longer. So um, we are very happy if you just drop us a note on one of the channels um, that you find um, Instagram or Facebook or email. Um, yes. You can find it on our website and um, yeah, get in touch and share your practices. And we will, I hope we will have like 50 more congresses once every four months in all parts of the world at the same time <laughs> <laughs> into the future and into the past. We, we will have some in the 60s, in the 15th century. We will change, we will change your past actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, whatever you have in mind, if you don't feel very certain, if you have questions, if you um, have some opinions and you just want to drop your opinions, we are very open to all of that. So everything is very welcome. Cool. Yes. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you. And I hope to see you in the show conference very soon in the future and in the past. <laughs>